Okay, welcome to another one of my videos. This is MIDI for beginners, and I'm not going to get too complex for this at all. This is simply MIDI routing and how to route uh, the data, MIDI data, either from a keyboard or external keyboard that you're playing, or from a soft synth, uh, sorry, from a MIDI clip to a soft synth and to a hardware synthesizer as well to create sound. So I think that's the first thing we need to get out of the way is MIDI is not sound. MIDI is simply a set of instructions to a synthesizer or other piece of musical equipment uh, to either produce sounds or change patches or change some settings. It can be used for lots of reasons but we're primarily interested today with the notes. So that's the first thing. MIDI is not sound. MIDI is a set of instructions that synthesizers understand to produce sound. Okay, so we've got that out of the way. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, playing a keyboard, external keyboard, to create a sound both from a soft synth and from an external device. So with that in mind, the first thing I'm going to do, uh, because this is a standard template, I'm going to change the widget setting here from custom to all, which will allow us to see uh, the necessary inputs and outputs on the various tracks. So that's the first thing to check. Secondly, we're going to press P, bring up the preferences, and we're going to go to MIDI devices. And if you have any input devices, they should be here and they should be checked. And you can give them a friendly name because some of the device names don't make much sense. And any outputs that you have for hardware, such as a synthesizer, obviously you've got a sonic cell there and a couple of drum machines, uh, they are there as well and they should also be checked. And that way they will then be available for selection from within Sonar. Uh, hardware devices is also, I'm not going to go into this too much, but it's also instrument definitions and that basically allows you to see patch names uh, instead of numbers, but that's for hardware. As I say, that's a topic for another day. But in playback and recording, it's just worth checking that Always Echo current MIDI track is selected as well. And that helps a lot when it comes to uh, the data being echoed. And by echoed, I mean being, I mean being sent out from that track to wherever you want it to go. So just make sure that's selected as well. OK, I'm just going to drag uh, the MIDI track down there so you can see what's happening there. And as I said, what we're going to do first is we're going to get a keyboard that I've got attached to input some data. So I'm going to click on the input and I'm going to come down to my PCR keyboard and select MIDI Omni. Now MIDI Omni basically means play everything that comes in regardless of the channel and you can select that for every device which will just be literally MIDI Omni or in this case I've selected the particular keyboard that I want to hear but all of the channels so it's PCR keyboard which is my friendly name for that device MIDI Omni means that whatever I play on my, on my PCR keyboard will be received by this MIDI channel and in fact, if I go and hit a few notes, you can see the meters responding. Now, we didn't hear anything there, and that's to be expected, and I'll explain why in a second. That's because of the output. Now, you need to tell this MIDI track what to play. And at the moment, it's being told to play my MRT3B, which is a Zoom drum machine. The reason there was nothing sounding was because there was no channel selected. My Zoom drum machine only responds to channel 10, and therefore, when it's non-channel, none, none no channel selected, it doesn't respond, so it doesn't play anything. If I change that to channel 10, as you can see there, and I select, uh, can't select the bank because it doesn't have any banks. Some instruments have lots of banks, but the, the particular drum machine doesn't. But I can select a patch and I'm going to select Live Rock, which is one of the drum kits available on the Zoom drum machine. Now, that's the only thing I've changed, you'll notice, is the channel number and the patch setting. And now I'm just going to go hit a few keys again. Bear with me. And as you can see, same result, MIDI data coming in, but now it's being told where to go, so it's outputting to my drum machine and hence producing sound. And that's that simple with uh, hardware. So it's device that's 
inputting, in this case my PCR keyboard, on all channels and the device that's responding, which is the output, in this case a Zoom drum machine, on channel 10, and that's because the drum machine only, or this particular drum machine, only responds to channel 10. To get a different sound from a different instrument, I simply change the output. So if I change this to my Sonic Cell, which is a Roland synthesizer, I change the channel to channel 1, because I don't want to hear drums from there, I want to hear a different patch sound. I can then select the bank, of patches if I select something one of the presets and we'll go with something called Jupiter Moves and see what that sounds like sounds like a uh, a string pad or something like that but as you can see that's how you select various sounds the only thing I changed there as you could see was the output so I'm telling it to play the sonic cell and the channel and the bank and patch so that's how to play uh, hardware now I'm guessing that a lot more people are probably interested in the soft synth side so that's what we're going to move on to now okay I'm going to hide the multi dock and also the buses so we can see a little bit better and we're going to cross to the browser select plugins and then I'm going to select synths and I'm going to drag in the TTS1 because that comes with all versions of Sona so just drag that across into a blank area of the uh, track view clip pane and as you can see we get the soft synth options up now you'll probably see that yours may have the simple instrument track checked possibly or the MIDI source and the first synth audio output checked uh, that's simply going to create those tracks for you if it's checked and that would normally be the default but as I said in in this case I'm going to show you I'm showing you how to route an existing MIDI track and an existing audio track which is the hard way of doing it but at least then you can you you'll get to understand the concepts and once you've got that the rest of it's quite straightforward so therefore in this case I've got all of these unchecked and I'm going to click on OK and as you can see it's opened up the TTS1 and we have 16 channels available to MIDI as I said earlier channel 10 tends to be drums so that's set to a standard drum set uh, and the rest of them by default are set to piano 1 so the same principle applies here I'm going to play this synth the TTS1 using my external keyboard so my MIDI track still has its input set to PCR keyboard Omni but now I need to change the output to the TTS-1 because that's what I want it to play so I click on the drop down box and select Cakewalk TTS-1 from the list now as I said a few seconds ago it's got 16 channels so I want it to play channel 1 which is there and I want it to play the piano sound which is already set to but if I wanted a different sound you simply select the bank and the patch from the list here so if I didn't want a piano I could change that to an organ sound for example and now when I go and play the keyboard you'll hear nothing and the reason we're hearing nothing is because I haven't set the output yet so the output of this TTS1 needs to go to an audio track to be heard and it just so happens we have an audio track but as you can see the input for the audio track is set to none so all I need to do to get some sound is change that to the TTS1 there's several outputs there as you can see but I want output 1 and I want it in stereo so I change that to output 1 stereo now go back to the keyboard and as you can see we have a keyboard sound uh, which isn't the organ as selected but it is as you can see now I've, I've just been there and selected changed that and you'll notice that the sound in the TTS one has now changed
So that's that. That was quite a good uh, demonstration simply because I forgot to set the audio output. So you can see how easy it is to play something and not get a sound. So let's just re uh, revisit that then. So MIDI, the MIDI track is the source. That's what you're going to hear. In this case, we've been playing a keyboard set by the input and we've assigned that to play the TTS-1 over here. And then the TTS-1 needs to output its sound somewhere and we output it to an audio channel, which we do by selecting the TTS-1 as the input of the audio. As you can see earlier, when I didn't assign it, there was no sound. So that's quite a good demonstration of, of why sometimes you don't get sound in action. So it's MIDI output into the synth, synth outputs to the audio. And that's as simple as that. That's how it works, be that hardware or software. Now, if you don't have a uh, hardware device such as a keyboard available, all is not lost. You can still play the soft synth. You just need to give it some instructions on what to play. And you can do that from a PRV view. So we select the MIDI track, press Alt 3, which brings up a PRV in the multi dock. Shift D will maximize that. Just minimize the synth out of the way. And we can input notes. Uh, from the PRV. Just click and as you can hear that's uh, got my snap set to whole. That's why I go in there. Let's just change that to quarter so we can just change that and just add notes by I'm just alt clicking there with the uh, smart tool what a way. So there's a little sequence of notes and if I shrink that down, press D, as you can see we now have a clip on the MIDI track. And basically that's now just going to, exactly the same as before, instead of inputting from a keyboard, it's now going to play that clip back to the TTS-1, which is going to output its sound to the audio track. So when I press play, and that's that, that's how you get that to sound. So. It, once you've got that basic concept set up of input output you can change this very easily if I now change the output of that to my sonic cell which is a, a hardware device as I mentioned earlier and I just mess around change a few patches here we'll go with something techno pits which I'm guessing is some sort of uh, techno string sound There you go. Simple as that. It's just a matter of changing what the MIDI is outputting to. Uh, and if it was a soft synth, you just need to make sure it's attached to an audio track. In this case, hardware is attached to my audio interface, so you get to hear it that way. And that's it. I hope that demystifies the uh, MIDI routing anyway. And as I say, when you do get to drag these across, then you can then assign it to either create a simple instrument track which hides a lot of that complexity from you, or you can get it to create an audio track and a MIDI track for you if it doesn't already exist. But I think showing it the way I've done it, you can at least hopefully understand the routing. So it's simple, MIDI out into the synth, synth out to the audio track, and that's it. I hope that helps anyway. Thanks.